All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Tom, and in tonight's episode, we are gonna be imaging the question mark nebula. Well, a part of it anyway. So I've looked at how we can frame it up, and we're not quite getting the full detail of the uh, nebula itself, but we are gonna be able to get those very, very tight details within the heart of that nebula. So tonight, we're gonna be running the C11. Uh, we've also got the Eagle 5S Plus on top, and then around the other side, if I spin us around a little bit, we've got the StarSense Auto Guider. Uh, not forgetting the Magic Eye on top of the Eagle 5S Plus, which is fantastic. That's really good so that when I wanna look at the darkness of our skies and I'm imaging a certain uh, nebula or galaxy, what I can do is I can actually, uh, on collecting date or on a second night or a third night, maybe a week down the line, a month down the line, I can actually mark up what the darkness scale was on this, and then I can actually match up with my images just to make sure that they're uh, as consistent as possible. So we've also run in a do controller, and we're running a do ring in the inside. And then you can see all the magic that happens inside. Okay, so we are running the Starzonia or Star Starizona a hyperstar and this is the uh, f 1.9 it's a focal length of 540 millimeters and this is the latest one so it's it's a really quick lovely piece of kit uh, we're also running a dedicated ccd camera which is the asi 2600 mc pro uh, but what we're going to be doing tonight guys is how we're going to photograph the uh, question mark nebula is we are going to run H alpha O3 and uh, S2 um, filters tonight so we can get those narrow band images and hopefully bring out some nebulosity and show some detail so I'll show the images at the end of the video but in the meantime let's get ready for the night of imaging <laughs> Right guys, so if you want to know what filters I'm using as well, I'm using the Bardar Ultra High Speed F2 uh, filters. So I'm using the H-Alpha, which is a 3.5 nanometer. I'm using the O3, which is a four nanometer. And I'm using the S2, which is a four nanometer, um, which 
just means that they're getting more detail. Uh, and this is what they look like. So I bought them as a, uh, an actual set. Uh, I believe that they was nearly 970 pounds or something for the full set. Uh, which when you start getting into the different palettes this is uh, such a, a nice change of pace where it gets to um, you know just imaging with without filters and, and using say an Optolong uh, L Pro which was what I was using previously uh, I wasn't getting that nebulosity the way that I kind of wanted to so uh, this is a little bit more artistic it's not such a real photograph it, it's still real obviously but it's not um, as the eyes would see it if you like but super fun to use um, a little bit challenging especially running a hyperstar so I do have to take off the dew shield um, especially when I start getting up um, you know quite high up in the sky because I can't reach my hand behind the dew shield and actually change the filter so the filter drawer you know if you can imagine having to put your hand through and try and get the filter drawer out it's an absolute nightmare so there we go guys that's the filter in the filter drawer uh, and this is the H-alpha that's inside at the moment you know we're quite fortunate to be having a clear night tonight considering we had torrential downpours earlier so it's a nice uh, it's a nice change to actually get a bit of cloud in the daytime and then in the evenings having a nice clear evening so yeah it's, it's going to be a really good night really really hopeful that uh, the date that we collect tonight will be very good so i'd just like to say to anybody that's new on the channel as well uh, thanks for tuning in and welcome so ultimately what we do on this channel is we kind of point the Celestron C11 uh, in the sky and we try and take as much images as possible uh, what we call light frames or data and uh, yeah what we're trying to do at the moment is mess around with filters have a little bit of experimenting with those and see what we can come up with uh, I've only been doing this for now nearly a year so about 10 months nine months ten months something like that so not long um, I dedicated quite a lot of time and money into getting this set up and trying to give you guys uh, something that's entertaining and hopefully a little bit educational <laughs> considering we are at learning astrophotography. So yeah, it's, I wanted to bring you along with me for the trip because I suffered massively uh, back in 2019 something like that and uh, I tried with my C8 telescope and failed miserably I was very disheartened and I gave up on the hobby uh, so now I've kind of got back into it and really enjoying everything about it again I'd like to think that I've really progressed in the short period of time that I've had into astrophotography uh, and astronomy so there's a lot to learn you're never going to remember everything and you're not going to learn everything in your lifetime there's just way too much out there to learn but every little bit that i am learning i'm enjoying thoroughly so for me this is what it's all about is getting it out with the telescope on a nice clear night and getting as much data as possible stacking all of that data together and creating a beautiful image that i can show you guys and occasionally go and show my wife who's not overly that interested in what I do. <laughs> so this is my warm room. Uh, it's not much of a room really, but it's nice enough and big enough for me to have a 49 inch curved screen and I can have three screens open on that. I've been meaning to get onto Nina and start actually using that software. I'm just not very good at change in, in moving over to something completely new. I had gone on to it a couple of times and I've tried to do a couple of bits with it but I'm sort of waiting for you know sort of maybe more than one clear night in a row so I can actually experiment with it a little bit more but at the moment I just feel like every clear night I've got because they're so far in between I, I just need to take the opportunity and the setup that I've got works well so although it's a very basic software that I'm using at the moment I know it works, I know how it works, and I don't want to waste a night of going on to Nina and not really experiencing, um, you know, getting some data collected uh, because I'm sort of messing around with the software. So that's why 
I've kind of not really gone on to Nina just yet. Uh, however, I am transitioning into that period of getting onto there. So within the next sort of couple of months, I'll start using Nina and we'll document that as well. Just to show you how it all works for me really, you know, as a complete beginner, I'm not very tech savvy. I don't like computers too much uh, and I don't like technology too much, but I've kind of got to go with the times. I'm grateful for technology, don't get me wrong. I mean, otherwise we wouldn't be able to take these images that we're taking. So I'm grateful for it. I just don't like change. <laughs> so we will uh, carry on doing what we're doing for the time being. And I'll just sort of do a little bit on Nina here and there, which like I say, I'll document anyway for you guys. All right, guys, also, I've got a few questions. Just wanted to find out from a few of the audience people, really. So what got you into astrophotography in the first place? Secondly, what's your favorite target in the night sky? And thirdly, how long have you been doing it for? Let me know.